<coughs> what I'm putting together is a set of staves, and usually on an American barrel, I have 27 staves. It's different nowadays because they're so mechanically made. But traditionally, you break about 29, two spare, just in case you broke a stave or two. And you would traditionally, by hand, using an axe and all the tools out there, make about um, one of these a day. The big Spanish cats, the butts, uh, my dad made those. That's what we made. We didn't make American cats. We made uh, the big butts mainly in, in Cork and, um, and they were called chain butts because they had to be filled with energy. Um, they had to be filled with sherry, so they were called canes. Um, and uh, yes, so now I'm going to set the stairs together and I'm going to raise the barrel as such. I don't say I'm going to make a barrel, I'm going to raise it. So I start off with a wide stave, pin it up against my leg, and I hold it, and then I can, a loose hand, I can get a, a thin stave, and then I get a wide one again, and then I got thin again, and wide, uh, and then I have to get a thin one again, <coughs> and then a wide one. So I'm varying the width as I'm going on, because I'm trying to create a circle. If I put all the white staves on one side, I'll end up with an egg shape, because the angles won't fit. If I had all the staves exactly the same width, I'll have a circle every single time, but I'll have too much waste in wood. And you've got to use all the wood you're given. It's expensive enough as it is. So this is why you end up going white, thin, white, thin. Um, now normally, Sex is not thing, but you get a girl to do this part to build a cat. Um, and what I always say is that you can't build a barrel or walk at a cooperage and be clean. So then I rub my hands off the charcoal and I completely smear her face. <laughs> and when she's about at this point, I say, This is the only time in my life I'm in full control of a woman. <laughs> It doesn't last very long, <laughs> and that's why I don't get a guy up, because a guy will probably hit me. <laughs> so, because we're on the time limit tonight, I didn't get a guy up, so I couldn't escape. So I keep on waiting. And the other thing we used to do uh, to uh, a guy I work with, is he'd be half around like this, you know? And we used to do the same guy regular, you know, a week or two. And We'd come behind him and we'd pull his pants down. <laughs> <laughs> and he's standing there and screaming. And the whole shop, the Cooper shop, is laughing, you know, everybody knows what's going on. And anyone else in the shop, he would have just thrown the barrel down, pulled up their pants, went after him with a stave. <laughs> and what he figured, he had half the work done. And he wasn't giving up on it. <laughs> and he wanted to, somebody to come up and pull up his pants, which nobody did. But he finished out the rest of the cats and he put his pants on the angles. And that's why we used to keep doing it to the same guy. So, um, so as I said, when, when, when I first started making these are, this is the way the barrels used to come in from America, not fully standing, but in shots, because the agreement was to allow barrels in from America, we had to get work from them. The same happened with the Spanish cats. They had to come through the Cooper shop first. And they usually got an extra set of hoops down low. Um, and the same with the American cats. And then unfortunately, as I said, in 1982, with the whiskey trade going so bad, the decision was to get rid of a lot of Coopers and bring in full standing casks. Um, and I, I'm not angry about any of that because that was necessary. It was economics. The whiskey was going to survive the boys. Otherwise. It was sad to see a lot of friends go, like the Dublin Coopers. Um, so the last couple of hoops going from the outside. And if this hoop comes up too far, now normally I have what I call a master hoop. I don't have to hoop off the cast. Be a bit more careful. And. Um, 
teeth, huh? I must always find the front of the cast where we are in the hole. That's the front of your barrel as such. And I'll explain why that's important in a few minutes. So, line up my rivets with where we drill the hole inside the barrel, so that's the front. Then you can tighten up a bit. 